2020 hasn't been an easy year for anybody, not least due to the tragic loss of these beloved stars. Nonetheless, their legacies will endure in the loved ones who survived them and the memories they've left for their fans. Here are the celebrities who have died in 2020. Kobe Bryant died at the age of 41 on January 26, 2020, in a helicopter crash over Calabasas, California. The crash also killed his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, who Kobe was reportedly taking to basketball practice at the time of the tragic crash. Bryant, who joined the NBA right out of high school, was widely regarded as one of the greatest basketball players of all time. He won five NBA championships and was named NBA Finals MVP twice and league MVP once throughout his celebrated 20-year career. The Los Angeles Lakers retired both of Bryant's jersey numbers, 8 and 24. In addition to being one of the most decorated NBA stars of all time, he was also an Oscar winner, taking home an award for his 2018 short animated film, Dear Basketball. Kobe is survived by wife Vanessa, whom he married in 2001 after six months of dating. In 2012, Vanessa filed for divorce, but they reconciled in January 2013. Kobe and Gianna are also survived by his three other daughters, Natalia, Bianca, and Capri. We love you both and miss you forever and always. Mommy. Hollywood legend Kirk Douglas died on February 5, 2020, at 103 years old. Born Issa Danielovich Demsky to a Russian Jewish immigrant family, Douglas grew up in New York with six sisters. His acting career kicked off when fellow Manhattan American Academy of Dramatic Arts student Lauren Bacall helped him land his first movie role in the 1946 noir drama The Strange Love of Martha Ivers. He won two Golden Globes and was nominated for three Oscars in the 1950s, finally receiving an honorary Oscar in 1996. He was best known, however, for Spartacus, for which he hired blacklisted screenwriter Dalton Trumbo at the height of America's McCarthyist attacks on alleged communists. Douglas later told People magazine, Dalton was in prison because he refused to answer questions, so I decided, the hell with it, I'm going to put his name on it. I think that's the thing I'm most proud of, because it broke the blacklist. Like a lot of things that we do in life, it wasn't until much later that I realized uh, the importance of it. Douglas survived a helicopter crash in 1991 and a stroke in 1996. He was a proud father of two sons with first wife Diana Dill, the actor Michael Douglas and producer Joel Douglas. He remarried to Anne Bidens in 1956, with whom he shared producer son Peter Douglas and actor son Eric Douglas, the latter of whom died of a drug overdose in 2004. Kirk and Anne were together until his death. After his father's passing, Michael Douglas said in a statement to People magazine, To the world, he was a legend, an actor from the golden age of movies who lived well into his golden years, a humanitarian whose commitment to justice and the causes he believed in set a standard for all of us to aspire to. Legendary actor Max von Sydow passed away on March 8, 2020, at the age of 90. In his youth, the Swedish actor served two years in the Swedish military before studying acting at Sweden's Royal Dramatic Theatre. Von Sydow worked with iconic filmmaker Ingmar Bergman in both Sweden and Hollywood, with one of his first prominent roles being the knight Antonius Block in The Seventh Seal. He remains the only Swedish actor to date to earn an Oscar nomination, which was a doubly rare accomplishment since he received his best actor nom after starring in a foreign language film, Pele the Conqueror. His more recent roles included Law San Tekka in Star Wars The Force Awakens and The Three-Eyed Raven in Game of Thrones. Von Sydow famously portrayed characters much older than he was in real life. When he was 43, he played 80-year-old priest Father Merrin in The Exorcist. He also portrayed Jesus Christ in The Greatest Story Ever Told, which the actor admitted was his most difficult role, since he felt the need to stay in character even off set. He once lamented, I couldn't smoke or drink in public. The most difficult part of playing Christ was that I had to keep up the image around the clock. As soon as the picture finished, I returned home to Sweden and tried to find my old self. It took six months to get back to normal. Kenny Rogers died of natural causes on March 20th, 2020, at 81 years old. Raised in a housing project in Houston, the musician joined a doo-wop group when he was 18 and had his first solo hit with That Crazy Feeling two years later. In 1967, Rogers found further success when he joined First Edition alongside Glenn Campbell. However, Rogers' first number one singles as a solo artist came in 1977 with Lucille and Coward of the County, followed by his magnum opus The Gambler, as well as the 
the Grammy-winning You Decorated My Life. Roger's 1983 duet with Dolly Parton, Islands in the Stream, became an instant classic, and Parton performed the song with Rogers at his 2017 farewell concert in Nashville. After Roger's passing, Parton tweeted, You never know how much you love somebody until they're gone. I've had so many wonderful years and wonderful times with my friend Kenny, but above all the music and the success, I loved him as a wonderful man and a true friend. While Rogers sold 100 million records, country radio often refused to play his crossover music. The singer told Rolling Stone in 2001, You know, country music has a box, and there's four corners. You can be all the way out to any of those corners and still get played, but the minute you step outside that box, you're going to get shut down. The trick is to be so successful that you can move the box. Rapper Pop Smoke was killed in a home invasion on February 19, 2020. He was just 20 years old. Real name Bashar Jackson, Pop Smoke was reportedly renting the home owned by the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Teddy Mellencamp and her husband, Edwin Ayoravi. According to the New York Times, four suspects made their way into the property after a party had taken place in the home. Although it's unclear what the burglar's motives were, Jackson was shot and rushed by ambulance to Cedar sinai Medical Center in West Hollywood, California, where he was pronounced dead. In their report on the incident, TMZ pointed out that Jackson may have given away his location to his killers on social media. He posted a photo on Instagram of a gift bag he had received with his address on it. The same day, he appeared in a photo with a friend holding a huge stack of dollar bills in the driveway of the property. The money's starting to come. This is just a lot more eyeballs and a lot. A lot more at stake. Exactly. Yeah. So my hope for you is that you... We good, though. Just days before his death, Pop Smoke's mixtape hit number seven on the Billboard 200, largely thanks to his summer 2018 smash, Welcome to the Party. His family said in a statement, Every prayer, call, and act of kindness is deeply appreciated as we mourn the loss of our son, brother, and friend. In the same statement, his family paid tribute to the city in which he had grown up. They said, Brooklyn knew him as Bashar. He was educated and nurtured in Brooklyn, and his rise to fame all developed from the place he proudly represented. Within the last year, his extraordinary giftedness was revealed to the world, introducing Pop Smoke. Rapper Lexi Allégé died at just 21 years old on January 1, 2020. Born Alexis Allégé Lynch, Lexi had amassed nearly 90,000 Instagram followers and millions of SoundCloud streams. Her debut single, Feel Less, dropped in 2014. A press release stated, This individual died due to a mixed fentanyl and ethanol toxicity. Emergency services were called to check on an unconscious Lynch, who was suspected of possibly suffering cardiac arrest, before EMTs arrived and was reported as being cold to the touch. Though attempts at revival were made, Lynch was pronounced dead at the scene. Singer Kilani, who featured Lynch on her song Jealous, expressed her sorrow at Lynch's passing, tweeting, Weakest, saddest way to start a new year. I'm off this happy new year. Please, 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 please be safe out here. Love on your people, please. Lynch's mother, Jessica Owen, told the Star Tribune that Lynch was working on a new album and was supposed to head to the studio on the day of her passing. Her completed music will now likely be released posthumously. Inside the actor's studio host James Lipton died following a battle with bladder cancer on March 2, 2020, at the age of 93. Lipton first developed his hit Bravo series in 1994. His first guest was screen legend Paul Newman, and the students featured on the show included future Oscar nominee Bradley Cooper. Over the course of its run, Inside the Actors Studio was viewed in tens of millions of homes across America, broadcast to 125 countries around the world, and received 16 Emmy nominations, making it the fifth most nominated series in TV history. Lipton himself also received a Critics' Choice Award for Best Reality Series Host. The famously verbose host interviewed nearly 300 stars on the long-running series, and once told The Hollywood Reporter that if someone had put a gun to his head and told him to predict his show's runaway success or die, he would have said, pull the trigger. Lipton hosted the show until his 2018 retirement, when it moved to Ovation TV. Following his death, his wife told The Hollywood Reporter, he lived each day as if it were his last. His work was his passion, loved what he did and all the people he worked with. He empowered people to do their best, and hopefully his spirit, curiosity and passion will live on. 
Neil Peart, drummer and lyricist of the Canadian progressive rock band Rush, died on January 7, 2020. He was 67 years old. In a statement made after his passing, Rush told CBC, It is with broken hearts and the deepest sadness that we must share the terrible news that on Tuesday our friend, soul brother and bandmate of over 45 years, Neil, has lost his incredibly brave three-and-a-half-year battle with brain cancer. Peart famously performed with a drum kit that completely surrounded him. He and Rush toured in 2015, at the conclusion of which he revealed he had been suffering from pain throughout. Pert had famously suffered two major tragedies in 1997. His 19-year-old daughter Selena died in a car accident, and he lost his wife to cancer just 10 months later. He remarried, however, and is survived by his wife Carrie and daughter Olivia. A number of stars and celebrities paid their respects to Pert on social media in the days following his death, including Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who wrote, We've lost a legend, but his influence and legacy will live on forever in the heart of music lovers in Canada and around the world. R.I.P. Neil Peart. British television personality Caroline Flack died of an apparent suicide on February 15, 2020. She was 40 years old. Flack was most well known for hosting a number of popular reality shows, the most recent of which was Love Island. But she was as famous for the scandals surrounding her personal life as she was for her work. Famously, she faced backlash over dating then One Direction crooner Harry Styles when he was just 17 years old and she was 31. She also claimed to have had a brief fling with Prince Harry in 2009, which she said ended once the press got wind of the affair. And it's not just showbiz journalists going, ooh, what's happened? It's people standing at my dad's house, my mum's house, my brother's house, my sister's house, my nan's house, and literally just going for my family. Flack's most recent relationship with Lewis Burton made headlines when she was arrested in December 2019 after allegedly assaulting Burton with a lamp while he slept. Burton declined to press charges, but Crown Prosecution Services moved forward with the case. Breaking his silence on the matter, Burton vowed to be Flack's voice moving forward on Instagram, writing in part, My heart is broken. We had something so special. I am so lost for words. I am in so much pain. I miss you so much. I love you with all my heart. James Lehrer, the founder and longtime anchor of PBS NewsHour, died peacefully at his home on January 23, 2020, at the age of 85. Lehrer was born in Wichita, Kansas, and studied journalism at the University of Missouri before serving in the Marines. He began his journalism career in Dallas, Texas, in 1959. In 1975, Lehrer joined forces with Robert McNeil to cover the Watergate scandal on what was then the Robert McNeil Report. The show eventually became the McNeil Lehrer Report, and later, the McNeil Lehrer News Hour. In 1995, McNeil retired, and the show became The News Hour with Jim Lehrer. Throughout Lehrer's 36 year PBS career, he covered just about every major American news story, including the Kennedy assassination and Bill Clinton's impeachment. He moderated 12 presidential debates, the most of anyone in history, from 1988 through 2012. He retired from News Hour in 2011. Lehrer was also a writer and the subject and host of the 1986 Emmy winning documentary My Heart, Your Heart, in which he detailed his 1983 heart attack. In 2011, Lehrer told the American Journalism Review, I have an old-fashioned view that news is not a commodity. News is information that's required in a democratic society. And Thomas Jefferson said a democracy is dependent on an informed citizenry. That sounds corny, but I don't care whether it sounds corny or not. It's the truth. DJ, music manager and producer ASAP Snacks, real name Jay Scott, died on February 2nd, 2020. However, no cause of death has been reported, nor have the circumstances surrounding his passing. Scott was a member of the ASAP Mob Hip Hop Collective and served as a DJ for its most famous member, ASAP Rocky, as well as one half of the duo Cozy Boys with ASAP Lou. Scott, an Atlanta native, moved to New York City and began DJing at parties before officially joining the ASAP Mob. A number of celebs in the music industry paid their respects to Scott on social media, including ASAP Rocky, who wrote on Instagram that he was lost for words at Scott's passing. Meanwhile, ASAP Ferg wrote in a post, Man, words can't even describe how I feel right now. Rest in peace to my brother. This was one of the healthiest guys I knew, but I guess God needed him. Janae Dubois, most famous for her role as Wilona on Good Times, died on February 17, 2020. The New York Times reports that Dubois' family listed her age as 74, but that she may have actually been older. Dubois also performed and co-wrote Moving On Up, the theme song to the Jeffersons. Dubois' daughter, Keisha Gupta Fields, said, She wrote that song as a promise to her mother, that when she obtained a certain level of stardom, that her dream was to essentially have her mum live in a deluxe apartment. 
Dubois grew up in Philadelphia before moving to Brooklyn in her youth. She had an illustrious Broadway career with roles in A Raisin in the Sun and Golden Boy, then started a young actor's workshop before moving to Los Angeles. After good times, Dubois kept acting, with roles in movies such as Charlie's Angels Full Throttle and an Emmy-nominated turn as Mrs. Avery on The PJs. Janet Jackson, who co-starred with Dubois on Good Times, expressed her sadness over Dubois' death on Instagram. She wrote, I saw firsthand how she broke stereotypes and changed the landscape for black women in entertainment. I'm grateful in recent years I had a chance to see her and create more lasting memories. Norman Lear, creator of Good Times, tweeted, Janae Dubois was all light and will be missed. I love that she wrote the theme song for her passing, Moving On Up. Joe Diffie, a country singer best known for his song John Deere Green, died on March 29, 2020, from coronavirus complications. Just days earlier, Diffie revealed his diagnosis on Facebook, writing, I am under the care of medical professionals and currently receiving treatment after testing positive for coronavirus. My family and I are asking for privacy at this time. We want to remind the public and all my fans to be vigilant, cautious, and careful during this pandemic. Diffie had 18 country top 10 singles and five number one country hits, including Home, If the Devil Danced in Empty Pockets, Third Rock from the Sun, Bigger Than the Beatles, and Pickup Man. He won a Grammy for Same Old Train in 1998. Known for his honky-tonk style, and down-home, working man sensibility, the Oklahoma native released a new track, As Long As There's A Bar, in July 2019. And his first vinyl LP, Joe, Joe, Joe Diffie, that November, he told Rolling Stone of his artistic process, I just like the songs themselves. I went that route, finding songs I really liked and that I related to. Really, it's not any more complicated than that. Diffie is survived by wife Tara Turpening Diffie and several children from his numerous marriages. Sadly, these aren't the only celebs who have left us in 2020 so far. Here are some of the other stars who enhanced our lives before leaving us all too soon. John Callahan, Mark Blum, Nick Gordon. If you or someone you know needs help, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. 8255 or text HOME to the Crisis Text Line at 741741.